collapse, the dimensional collapse starting? Is it already starting? It's already started. With the sound and the color? Okay. It's already, it's already started. Thank you for leading me here. Um, what you're going to start hearing about in the ne next near, in the very near future are something called rods. And they will be something that will be videotaped. Um, and what they will be, what you will see are large streaks just shooting through the air that are etheric, but are being able to be captured on tape. And what you're seeing is literally fourth and fifth dimensional craft moving through space, not having the slightest clue that they're flying right through us. Okay? And that's because you're beginning to see the implosion. <laughs> it's great stuff. So they're sitting right on top of us. So within less than a plot unit of space above you, there's another dimension that actually exists with a whole other universe happening simultaneously while we're sitting right here. From higher dimensions, they experience time differently. Time really doesn't exist. The past, present, and the future happen all at once. So somebody from the fifth dimension would look at us and they'd be able to see us in all the different rooms. The different rooms represent different time frames of existence within this structure. So they can see the past, present, and future at the same time. Weird stuff starts happening the higher the dimensions you go. Atoms are 99.999% empty space. Nothing is really here. Everything is only a light wave slowed down to a particular frequency. And so if you can match frequencies, you can merge with things. You can walk through walls, all that kind of stuff. The things that are seen paranormal could be advanced beings have tapped into some type of uh, understanding of how to match different frequencies in our dimension and appear paranormal. But in true reality, they could just be taking a peek in. Dimensions are meshing together. Abraham Lincoln was elected to Congress in 1846. John F. Kennedy was elected to Congress in 1946. Abraham Lincoln was elected president in 1860. John F. Kennedy was elected president in 1960. Both presidents were shot on a Friday. Both presidents were shot in the head. Now it gets really weird. Lincoln's secretary was named Kennedy. Kennedy's secretary was named Lincoln. Both were assassinated by Southerners. Both were succeeded by Southerners named Johnson. Andrew Johnson, who succeeded Lincoln, was born in 1808. Lyndon Johnson, who succeeded Kennedy, was born in 1908. John Booth, who assassinated Lincoln, was born in 1839. Lee Oswald, who assassinated Kennedy, was born in 1939. Now, hang on to your seat. Lincoln was shot at the theater named Ford. Kennedy was shot in a car called Lincoln, made by Ford. Lincoln was shot in the theater, and his assassin ran and hid in a warehouse. Kennedy was shot from a warehouse, and his assassin ran and hid in a theater. Booth and Oswald were assassinated before their trials. And here's the kicker. A week before Lincoln was shot, he was in Monroe, Maryland. A week before Kennedy was shot, he was with Marilyn Monroe. You know this, but we kind of are in our 
our transformation era, and I'm talking about the collective as a whole and as above, so below individuals. But like, can you feel it, babes? Can you feel it? Can you feel the timelines collapsing? Can you see how even on an internal level, you are letting go of everything you no longer need, everything that's no longer in alignment with who you are becoming, okay? So celebrate the tower moments. If you've been working on yourself, raising your vibration, really cultivating, returning to self, you can let go of the relationships, the jobs, whatever it was that is being removed from your reality because you're ready for more. You're ready for something bigger. You're ready for a higher reality, a higher timeline. So let those timelines, let those realities collapse. You've outgrown them. It's time now to step into you, to step into a higher version of you. The universe is removing these things because on a soul level, you're ready for so much more. So let the destruction happen. Let the storm clear your path. If you are in a period of transition, which I'm a lot of us, most of us are, surrender to it. Set your intentions for the highest and best to happen because it's an exciting time. It's not a time to be in fear. It's a time to be excited about who you're becoming. It's a time to start designing your reality. It's a time to honor your essence, to be honest with yourself to step into this person that you're becoming. I don't know. If One thing you must remember is that when you're talking about the dimensions and timelines are shifting, this is a, this is something that happened all over this universe. All right. For us, it's mental. For us, it's mental. And we as original beings, we are literally, our lives are being reshaped as we speak right now. And this whole false narrative that was created by this artificial intelligence system that invaded our realm. We're watching this collapse. We talked about the hive mind earlier. And the reason for the hive mind is to try to keep our mentality on a third dimensional level because the entities who are running this entire thing cannot evolve into the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth, eleventh, the twelfth, the thirteenth. They can't go to the thirteenth density. They can't even they can they can only remain on the third density. They can't go above above the third density. So the whole point is I can control the minds of especially the original beings because we're the ones who literally make this thing happen. You know, very uh, very few of us have have a walk have awakened among our of our, among our species. But remember, the few literally controls the many. All right, seriously. And so you know, just like we say, Israel say, hey, the young blacks are the problem with Israel. Why? Because our minds have changed. We be in the the atoms of this realm. All right, we're causing this realm to go from a third density to a fourth, a fifth, a sixth um, higher density because we're seeking to go into a higher mindset and not um, remain where location Veracruz, Mexico. Clap. Um, we're we're not. Um, we're not comfortable staying on the same level, dealing with money, things, cars, clothes. It's like so many of us want to evolve into this higher species of beings. We're just like, this is what we want to be. You know, we no longer want to be in this controlled environment where I got to pay bills, I got to get up, I got to go to school, I got to go to work, got to go to church, got to do this, got to do this, got to do this, got to do this, got to do this. And it's like everything is like textbook, perfect, textbook, perfect. This We're going past this right here. So that's the whole hive mind thing. The hive mind thing is all designed to keep everyone on a third density level. Because when you break away from the hive mind and you start going on your own, just like we talk about building and creating, designing, going deeper into your meditation, going to the astral realms, controlling things outside of you that you can't do physically, you do spiritually. I mean, this is what's this is what's taking place, especially us as original beings. So we're causing we're the atoms uh, of this realm. You have to remember when you start talking about atoms, you're talking about those. The atoms are literally the the the, the uh, 
electrically charged um, entities to actually control the whole thing. I mean, you got these atoms in your body, and these atoms are working. It's, the, it's, it's, it's your atoms that's, that's keeping your body going, and it's what this is the atoms that you put into your body that causes you to either die off or to become more powerful and to grow and expand. See what I'm saying? So. We as the original beings are the atoms of this realm, and we're taking this to a whole another level. All right, we're taking it to a whole another level. So understand that, like we said, the hive mind, the hive mind is all designed to keep us at a third density level, we to control how they think, we to control everything that they do, so that they would not expand, keep them at a third density, and we can survive. That's all it's about. It's all it's, so it's a thing of survival. Cover the sky up. So if you cover the sky up, there's no sun. They're not going to want to go outside. And then what are they going to do? They want to stay inside and we can get them connected with this AI so that we can feed off of them, keep them in a third dimensional mindset. You understand what's going on? So, yes, the dimensions, the third dimensional is collapsing as we speak. Our galactic sun. All right, the sun that charges up this galaxy, because there are many suns. Each galaxy has got its own sun. This, this, this is not the one that's, that's east of us or west of us, but yet it's not the sun that's over this entire universe. No, this is just this galaxy. Each galaxy has got its own galactic sun. All right. That's just how it works. And some galaxies have more than one galactic sun according to the frequency and the vibration of that galaxy. All right. So as we raise our frequencies and our vibrations, we change things. All right. So um, let's uh, continue on this message here, okay? Yeah. I, I think that dimensions are starting to merge. don't realize that they're merging with their multi-dimensional self meaning that the data within their dna which is really just a living library of who they really are is coming to the surface and integrating into their body now when this data integrates it can cause a lot of different things to happen this one has to do with emotions because the emotional faculty is going to pick up on this light on this data and you're going to begin feeling things that don't make sense to the logical mind and for people that don't know what's going on and that this is a huge part of the ascension process you can easily begin to see how people can potentially spiral downhill because of this hi my name is big wolf now look though when you see these on the Egyptian wall, this is symbolizing the needers that can travel into different dimensions, right? The circle above their head is called an egg of metamorphosis. You can see this. It's symbolized by a 90-degree angle shift, right? Different dimensions are separated by 90 degrees. When you see them traveling up a wall of a 90 degree angle, that's what they're symbolizing, right? Now keep listening, the jewels is coming. Now remember I told you it's called the egg of metamorphosis, right? That's what you see above the heads. That's what makes them needers, the power to travel in that 90 degree angle shift, right? I'm gonna show you how different dimensions and all that shit correlate with music, listen. So once you travel and do that 90 degree angle shift, you can physically leave at will. I'm going to show you how dimensions work. You see how the, let's just pick the E key on the piano, right? You see how this is your dimension, but there's a, a very definite spot where the next dimension is. This is how this works. I'm going to show you. Listen, we live in a 7.23 centimeter wavelength right you know like on a computer when the base hit them wavelengths ours is 7.23 centimeters you know this by the distance between your eyes from the tip of your nose to the tip of your chin and across your palm and what separates your chakras is all 7.23 centimeters this is our wavelength this is what dimension we are in if you was to change it you would literally just change it to another dimension it's 12 dimensions but the 13th being the next of the first of the beginning of the next cycle so it's really the first and the 13th all at the same time right 
We are here in the third dimension. Listen. So just like on the piano, there are 12 notes in an octave and 12 overtones between each one, right? Now, they go that number again. 12 and 12, 144. How you become a hundred, a part of the 144 is by having that dimensional knowledge to leave that energy, that energy field, that astral projection knowledge. <laughs> now, back when they created that microwave frequency, this is what they did. They upped the power. We were supposed to be low and steady. They they put it to your pay for this shit. And that's why our shit is so it's a powerful frequency bonding us to this month. This is an AT&T microwave tower. You can tell it's an AT&T microwave tower because of the way that it is. Here's the microwave antennas. Here's the AT&T. It's pretty neat. This is a microwave tower. You can tell it's a microwave tower because of the way that it is. It's a tower and it has microwave dishes. It's pretty neat. Playing with the fire element. And let me just show you how it went. Uh, so right here, you guys could just watch me um, mess with the settings on iPhone just to see what I get. He said in the comment that if he asked me to show him, them, show him themselves, you see the face there? That's the face right there. And this is fire. He, this is fire that he created. And his, it's like it's a head right there. You see the head? That's the hair. See the head right there? Let's move back a little bit. Let's move back. You see the head? See the neck? And the head? See the face right there? All connected. Hmm. Pretty neat, ain't it? Right now. So, like, look, are you guys feeling like you are revisiting some old things in your life or situations or people? I know I have been. Um, you kind of are seeing it in your dreams or even in your waking state. You find yourself thinking about people from back in the day or um, reliving experiences that you've had, like kind of getting mad all over again or getting sad all over again. And in some instances, getting happy all over again. But for the most part, we're kind of clearing out some things that are old in our life path. And so right now we are shedding a lot. I'm literally shedding. And so if you find yourself just crying out of the blue or you find yourself getting mad out of the blue or just thinking about somebody from your past, know that this is coming up um, for transmutation. It's time to like move it out and move it forward because the grid is now pushing us into like the 4D, the fourth dimension. Well, we've been pushed in the 4D, but now it's kind of like the third and fourth are literally merging. And so as it merges, look at what's happening. We are kind of getting rid of or the third is crumbling. So as it crumbles, so does some of your traumatic experiences and conditioning that you've had right now. I mean, during your lifetime. So like as these two combine, be in the mindset or just be aware that you're going to be kind of shedding some things. And as a result of shedding some things, you're going to be experiencing or reliving some things. Um, I found myself this morning, I woke up just crying I'm like why am I crying I was thinking about things that happened like long long time ago just came out the blue and so I realized that it was coming up for me to shed okay because remember um as we ascend to that fifth dimension the third has to do something right it has to crumble it has to go somewhere it has to leave literally so these two earths can merge this higher vibrational earth and this lower vibrational earth have got to come to a place of merging and so we're we're in the process of merging right now so be gentle with yourself be patient with yourself just be aware of yourself and just get through it okay just get through it and know that we are shedding shedding some of our old skin and that's what we want to do okay so go through the emotions with the knowing that you are evolving imagine that this folder is a dimensional plane now assuming that it is no height and no depth what would this mean it would mean that it's a one-dimensional world so if 
Hypothetically, an organism was living inside of it. It would only be able to move in a linear path forward and backwards in a straight line. Now, if we go to the second dimension, we have two dimensions. We have width and we have length. So hypothetically, if an organism lived inside of here, then it would be able to move up, down, left, right, and anywhere else in between. And a two-dimensional world is comprised of an infinite series of one-dimensional worlds stacked upon each other. Just as our three-dimensional world, which has depth and length and height, is comprised of an infinite series of two-dimensional worlds. So, this, now that I've stacked many folders upon each other, we have three dimensions. We have depth, we have length, and we have width. Now, what happens if you keep going on from here on out? We would have a four-dimensional world. But what exactly is the fourth dimension? In order to understand this, we need to understand how dimensions are perceived. We live in the three-dimensional world, but despite that, we actually view things as to be two-dimensionally. Take a perfect sphere, for example. If you're looking at a sphere, it looks just like a regular two-dimensional circle. The only way that you can tell it's this actual sphere instead of a circle is because of the hues of light down. So just like in a two-dimensional world, if a um, organism in the two-dimensional world was looking upon a circle, it would, the light would make it appear to be lighter at one end and darker in the middle. Also, if, you, if an object is moving farther, closer and farther away from you, you don't actually perceive that it's getting closer and farther away. You see that it's getting smaller or larger, and then you assume that it's getting either farther away or closer. But let's say that an object was to grow in perfectly equilibrium, so that it was growing at the same speed that it was shrinking as you move it farther away then you would not be able to tell without any lights or uh, if there were details on the objects that it's moving or growing at all. You may have assumed that since we perceive things to be in two dimensions, that a two-dimensional uh, organism would see in one dimension. So, as we're watching this uh, rubber band expand, as it moves farther away from this little uh, organism in the two-dimensional world, it does not actually perceive anything is happening to it because it's growing at the same speed that it's moving farther away. But since we can actually see it from the three-dimensional world and perceive things to be in two dimensions, we can see things for how they actually are. The reason that the two-dimensional organism doesn't see things the way they really are is because the two-dimensional organism sees things in one dimension, just how we, three-dimensional creatures, see things in two dimensions. So in a way, we don't really see our world the way it truly is. A four-dimensional creature, however, seeing our three-dimensional world in three dimensions, would be able to see through things, would be able to see absolutely everything, just as we could see if there was several spread along a 2D um, environment on your floor. You'd be able to see inside houses, you'd be able to see inside of people. So if a two-dimensional world, a flat surface is just made of an infinite amount of uh, lines, then the 3D world is just made out of an infinite amount of planes. So the 4D world, logically, is made out of an infinite amount of 3D objects, though they're not just put together like um, you would, like building blocks. It's, that's not how the 4D world is, that would just be 3D again. So in order to understand this, we need to understand the logical progression of mathematics in our world. Imagine that this connects piece represents the first dimension. It's simply a straight line, which is basically what the first dimension looks like. And if you add three more of these straight lines and connect them to do so that adjacent sides are perpendicular and opposite sides are parallel, then you have the basic shape of the second dimension. You have a square. Now, if you keep going from here, and you add, four, add it so that there's a total of four squares, and all adjacent sides are perpendicular, and all opposite sides are parallel, then you end up with, obviously, a cube. So, if you tried to keep going from here, and you would have a four-dimensional basic shape, you would have a, what's called a tesseract. Now, I cannot show you a tesseract, but you need to understand that it's basically four cubes that are within each other that um, have all adjacent sides perpendicular, 
and all par and all opposite sides parallel. If there are three lines connect uh, four lines connect into each vertex. So a tesseract would look somewhat like this picture. Now that, that's not exactly what it looks like because this is a two-dimensional depiction, and obviously not all the lines are straight. So I cannot show you what a tesseract actually looks like because we cannot perceive things in the third dimension. You cannot even imagine what a tesseract looks like. You cannot physically, you cannot in your mind picture the fourth dimension or a fourth dimensional shape. You can keep going on from the fourth dimension even. You can go to the fifth dimension, the sixth dimension, the 71st dimension. It doesn't matter. Theoretically, there are an infinite amount of spatial dimensions. The common misconception of the fourth dimension is that the fourth dimension is time. Now, while some argue that by going forward and backwards in time, if you move forward the same distance and backwards the same, then you would end up in the same place you started, just like in the fourth dimension. And while that may seem logical, if you think about it, it really doesn't make sense. If you imply that the fourth dimension is actually time, well, first of all, time is not spatial. There's a difference between space and time, quite obviously. And assuming that all dimensions are according to a pattern, then that doesn't really make sense either, because saying the fourth dimension is time, every dimension has time in it, so that would mean that the fourth dimension is special in some way, which doesn't really make any sense. Another reason this doesn't make sense is that we so very, very, very slightly travel through time whenever we move due to the distance um, that light takes to get to our body. Now, if a group of astronauts were to get in a spaceship and they were to go very, very, very close to the speed of light, then they would, and they, they went around in this um, impossible, nearly the speed of light spaceship for a few months, and then afterwards they returned to Earth. They would find that Earth had actually progressed a few years, so they had moved forward in time by moving that quickly. Another interesting concept involving the fourth dimension is that many physicists and even mathematicians uh, may say that the dimensions are very, very slightly curved, because if you really think about it, nothing can be truly, absolutely infinite. So imagine that a, the first dimension, the line, is just very, very slightly curved, so that after a very long time, it will um, end up creating a circle. So. Um, as suggested by many physicists, if you keep going in the same direction, then you will end up where you are, where you started after a very, very long amount of time, obviously. And the same thing would happen to the second dimension. If it's just a square, and then you extend it very, very slightly in a curve, and it will eventually make a sphere. And the same thing happens in our dimension, except it will form a very, very slightly curved um, third dimension, which will form a four-dimensional universe, basically. So what this kind of means is that our three-dimensional world is within a four-dimensional world, and the four-dimensional world is within a fifth-dimensional world, and so on. Now, I did say that nothing can be truly infinite, but if this is true, and a dimension is really within another dimension, within another dimension, within another dimension, then I'm implying that there's an infinite amount of dimensions, which is the only problem I really have with this theory. I'm not sure if it ever stops or if infinite infinity is really even possible. We don't know that. Thanks for watching my video, and I hope this gave you a better idea of what the fourth dimension is. You can teleport, you can fly, you can heal things. Your thought creates the reality. But there are limitations. You just can't destroy the whole dimension. There are astral police, by the way. The way you meet a time traveler is in the fifth dimension. Oh, they're real. We know they exist. Every time you can think of a potential future, you're actually creating a parallel universe. Your astral body, your spiritual body. It looks like a ghost. Let's say you're having a problem with someone. Go to the astral plane. You create what's called a sanctuary, like a conference room in the fifth dimension. You now summon the soul of the person you're having problems with they have to show up you can now work out your differences you can do a negotiation with them they won't on the earth plane won't know what's going on because they're asleep now in the fifth dimension you're down here on earth way at the lowest level dimension one dimension two dimension three you're in 3d the third level of, of this entire thing you're only the third level out of all of this you're only the third level and you think you're the shit in the center of the world uh you ain't shit you, you, you are shit you're at the bottom you're at the shit level. You're at the dying, 
dying level, which you think is normal. It's not normal to be in, in a fallen system. This is a fallen system. Uh, this isn't a fallen system. This is following the law of one, and we're glorious. We're glorious beings in Tara, and we're immortal, and we're giants, and we're super psychic. Now, that doesn't mean there's no darkness. Remember, darkness goes all the way up, all the way up to the 11th dimension, remember? Darkness goes all the way up to 11th dimension. Here, here's their fallen system. It goes all the way up to 11.5, the phantom. The black hole of uh, space time distortion for a second. The pit. Hell, if you want to call it. Uh, so darkness only goes up to uh, right before the Christed level. D12 is the Christed level. This is where Jesus comes from. That's why he was called Jesus Christ. It has 48 strands of DNA. See, most, most indigos will have starting 24. You have particle universe, but half of your self, your other self, is a, your doppelganger is, a pair of, is an anti-particle universe. You, you, you have uh, incarnations here. That's why there's beings with 24 strands possible. 12 on this side, 12 on that side. But remember, there's more dimensions still. 